Hello everyone, it's Double A here. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can use your Android phone with a USB to go cable, the classic RTL SDR USB, and an SMA to coax adapter plugged into your favorite coaxial antenna to tune radio. Now, with these apps, you can tune AM radio, FM radio, and even decode a radio data service, which is the like song name and whatnot that FM radio tra stations transmit. All right, so the first thing you want to do is go to the Play Store, and you will need the SDR driver. And uh, this one here from Signalware Limited is the one you want, or at least the one that I, I've used. There are some other drivers on the Google Play Store. And uh, this app, you can't really do anything with it. It's just the driver, so it allows the phone to talk to the RTL SDR. You can't actually demodulate any radio signals with just the driver app itself. So what you need is some kind of app to demodulate the signals. My favorite one is SDR Touch. And this is it here, also from Signalware Limited. And you'll see why this is my favorite in a minute. Uh, the full version is $10. I bought it, depending on how much of a radio nerd you may or may not be interested. All right, so right now we're in demo mode. Let's tune to a radio station. So we'll go to jump, and let's tune to 93.7. It's a talk station, shouldn't get me dinged on copyright. All right, there we go. Now with the free version, you can set your signal type here. You can get the program service information, which right now it looks like this station is just transmitting an ad, but your RDS data is limited in the free version. It's about all you get. There is this RDS option, but look, it gives you 300 seconds in the trial. What is pretty neat is you can see the constellation diagram here. So RDS is just zeros and ones. One of these points represents a zero and the other one represents a one. And ideally, if you have a perfect quality signal, all those dots are gonna fall exactly on the crosses of the lines. Now, obviously you can see my signal isn't fantastic. I'm in a building, so my signal sounds decent, but it's not perfect and you can see that. But it looks like the app is able to decode the RDS data pretty well. It's actually saying the signal quality is 100%. So I guess that means there are no bit errors. But you can still see the constellation isn't fantastic here. There is a squelch. You can adjust the squelch. And if the squelch line is above the signal strength, it will mute the audio. So you could use this to mute out a staticky station. You can also record either just audio or the full IQ baseband, which can be useful if you want to, say, save an instance from a radio station in time and play it back later on a different software. You can adjust the gain here. The audio gain works pretty well for this app, so I'm going to leave it on that. And then there is also Spectrum. Now, the free version of the app only gives you a minute of Spectrum before you got to buy it. Now, you can delete it and reinstall it, which if you're just going to use this for messing around occasionally, that works fine. But if you want to be serious about this app and help the developer out, I suggest you buy the full version I have. And the full version, in my opinion, is worth it for the serious hobbyist. Now the best way I've figured out to get the full version is just run out the time on one of the trial features. And then it should prompt me to purchase a key for the full version. All right, let's get my key. I've already bought this, so I should be able to just install it. But it's $9.99 as of the recording of this video. 
All right, let's go back. And now we have the full version. You might have to restart the app SDR Touch to get the full version features working. There we go. And now I can look at the RDS data for an unlimited amount of time. Now this station isn't transmitting too much RDS data, so let's try a different radio station. Man, they're all transmitting ads. Here we do have a uh, program service radio text. We can see the constellation diagram. Let's try a different station. All right, here we go. So we can see the song name. I'm not going to turn the audio on because, again, I don't want to get dinged for copyright. Okay, this is interesting. So not all radio stations do this. This radio station is actually transmitting the time. And not many receivers support this. My car receiver sure doesn't. But some receivers can pull the time from the radio station. So they're theoretically, as long as the radio station is transmitting the correct time, pulling the correct time and showing you the correct time. We can see down at the bottom what I'm assuming this is percentage of time, maybe percentage of bits, maybe both. What percentage are being used for the different services that are offered with RDS? This is a weaker station. Ooh, yeah, we can see the signal is too weak. The constellation diagram is just a mess. Uh, it, it can't tell heads or tails of it. You can't tell if it's a zero or a one, and it's, it's not able to decode anything. I wonder if I, let, let me move the antenna closer to the window here, see if we can get anything. So you can definitely see the signal's getting stronger on the spectrum there. Still not looking great. We got a little bit of RDS there for a second. All right, all right, we got, we're getting something. Okay. So there, our constellation diagram looks good enough that we're decoding some data here. The signal quality is not fantastic. We're obviously getting some bit errors. Yeah, see, it said program type was drama there for a second. This is not, I mean, that's not, uh, obviously they're sending the program type as pop music. Even though this is a country station, gotta love that. But you can see a glitch out there for a second. I've seen, like, incorrect call signs with this, all kinds of stuff. What I'm trying to find is alternative frequencies. This feature is more commonly used in Europe. I have seen radio stations use this in the United States. One example that I know of is WXPN and their repeater system in eastern and central Pennsylvania. Of the stations I know here in Pittsburgh, it doesn't look like any of them are using alternative frequency. But the idea with that is, uh, say if a radio station is on two different frequencies. For example, WXPN is on 88.5 from Philadelphia and 88.7 from the Harrisburg area. And 88.5 can transmit an alternative frequency as 88.7 and vice versa. And if you have a radio that supports it, it will automatically switch from one station to the other when your signal gets too weak on the first station. And it, it can theoretically allow for a seamless experience where you can just set your radio to one station and drive across the state, drive across the country, and have that same station the whole way, not have to make any changes on the dial. So that's what alternative frequency is. Again, it's kind of hard to find in the United States. It does look like this station is transmitting a lot of stuff that you can see, which is pretty cool. Let's try one more station. And let's see what RDS data we get. This signal looks really clean. Look how spot on those dots are on the constellation diagram. Doesn't look like this station is using alternative frequency either. Even though the station does have some repeaters on different frequencies, I guess they just haven't implemented the technology. So that's how you can demodulate radio with an Android phone and an RTL SDR USB. 
Maybe you can control the weather with this thing too. Who knows? Thanks for watching and please subscribe.